You know, I got to tell you, that Bitcoin conference in Nashville over the weekend, it feels like one of those seminal moments that people are going to be talking about years from now. My next guest actually played a major role at the conference and continues to be a passionate advocate dedicated to spreading the word and educating the masses. Joining me now, Coin Stories podcast host, Natalie Brunel. Natalie, you know, it's so weird because it wasn't long ago. Bitcoin was tumbling, right? It was under 20,000. Even people who love to say it may go to 10,000. Could you imagine uh, now, I mean, just not long after that, you're getting shout outs on X from U.S. senators, sitting U.S. senators for discussing Bitcoin. It's come a long way in a short period of time. Yes, it has. We missed you in Nashville, Charles, because this conference was truly historic. You had a former U.S. president telling people not to sell their Bitcoin. And people are really ready for change and a pro-Bitcoin administration. Some of our current leaders have been leading a war on digital assets, so they need to go. Because remember, Bitcoin was created by the people for the people. It wasn't delivered by Wall Street or Washington, D.C. It wasn't promoted by big tech. It emerged from the free market to become the eighth or ninth largest asset in the world. And now two of the three candidates are lobbying this community because it's grown into a massive voting block. And they're seriously proposing to adopt Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset for the U.S. So this is historic and shows that Bitcoin is winning. It really is amazing. So you have President Trump there who, who you know, it was war obviously warmly received. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, gave a very powerful speech. And by the way, there was a letter from 28 Democrats. They sent it to the DNC saying, hey, we should, we've got to be more forward looking on this. But and I think it's Elizabeth Warren's out there who just for some reason don't believe crime was ever committed with fiat currency. Right? So my question now is, when do you think both both parties just officially say, OK, we embrace Bitcoin and blockchain? Well, that's exactly what's going to happen because Bitcoin is bipartisan. It is open source code designed to offer property rights to the globe. And I think there's probably been a little bit of panic ahead of the DNC that the party may have alienated some young voters who are finally catching up economically because of Bitcoin. And you're right. There are people within the party who recognize this technology is useful. It is American at its core. It empowers the average person. And the U.S. should be a leader in supporting Bitcoin. So I would not be as surprised to yeah. see a, a, a pro Bitcoin stance emerging from everyone because again Bitcoin is for everyone regardless of political party and maybe maybe it's the one thing that can help bridge this divide between us that people are so tired of seeing because who can be against economic empowerment for all of us I'm going to make you blush now I know that's hard to do but Van Eck last week had a report out saying that Bitcoin could go to 52 million by 2050 if it became a reserve asset around the world. You've never thought 52 million, have you? I mean, the sky's the limit. I'm here for it, Charles. Um, you know, this, their bull case is similar to what Michael Saylor forecasted over the weekend. Right. And price predictions are pretty difficult 25 years out. But I think what this means is that large asset managers are recognizing how early we are and the potential opportunity here and Bitcoin's ability to accrue and store value over the long run. Over the weekend, Van Eck CEO also said that 30% of his own personal net worth is in Bitcoin. Wow. So when you think about the hundreds of trillions of dollars out there and global wealth and assets, Bitcoin represents less than 1% of that pie today. So I think it's safe to say that by 2050, Bitcoin is poised to command a huge chunk of global wealth, especially if you understand that they're going to have to keep printing and debasing the currency. So as Satoshi wisely put it, you might as well get some just in case. All right. So I got less than a minute to go. 30 seconds. Uh, I was reading tweets all weekend long. Uh, a couple that stood out to me in the men's bathroom, I saw a picture of it. Ten, ten minutes to get to the men's bathroom, zero for women, which is almost the opposite of almost any, any sort of thing you go to. The gender divide, what's being done to get more women involved? Yeah, you know, Bitcoin ownership right now is skewed toward young men, but I see a huge opportunity here. This year, I actually co-hosted the third annual Women of Bitcoin event at the conference. It doubles in size every year. We have more demand than seats. And I think that the next wave of Bitcoin investors will be led by millennial and Gen Z women. They are educated. They are earning higher incomes. They lead family finances. And they're ready to take advantage of what is really a peaceful revolution to save for their futures and spread economic hope and freedom around the world so oh. i'm proud to be a woman of bitcoin well you are you're you're, you're amazing a, a peaceful revolution we all want that yeah. natalie thank you so much my friend thanks for having me